let's look at some more advanced table commands. Uh, let's go to the um, end of our document by pressing Control End. And let's draw a table in. Let's go to Insert Table. And let's do Draw Table. And let's draw a table that's about 3 inches wide. You can tell by your ruler. And, oh, about 3 inches down. Now, mine's using my last border setting that I had. And let's change the pin color to that dark blue there. And let's click Draw Table. And let's draw three lines to make four rows. And let's say we want this top one to be um, merged. So let's um, draw two lines to make three columns there. Press Escape or click the Draw Table button to turn off um, the Draw Tool, the Draw Table Tool. And let's begin to populate our table uh, with some information. Once you get this information in, press Tab to create a new row. And we have um, populated our table. So let's apply a table style to it. And uh, this time, let's do new table style. And let's tell it to format the style based on, um, let's do colorful grid accent one. And let's tell the font to be 12 point and the font to be magneto, just for the fun of it. And um, click OK. And now we have to apply that style. It pops up over here. And let's take off um, banded columns here. And we let's tell it we have a header row. And let's tell it to do first column. So we've got... And let's change the shading on this column on our headings to also be black, just to make it look a little nicer. Uh-oh, our font disappeared. No worries. We just need to change it to white over here. Okay, so we've set a table style. Say, so really, we would rather have this information as a tabbed list. Once it's in a table, we can quickly convert it to a tabbed list without having to retype everything. Select the table by clicking the uh, handle that's in the top left hand corner to select the table. Go to the layout tab and click convert to text. And let's tell it to separate at tabs. And then uh, go ahead and leave that box checked and you can click OK. Now I've got some text missing because my font's been changed to white. Let's go change our font back to automatic there. And we've got our tabbed information. If we want to um, set tabs on this text, we certainly can. 
Um, let's select this information. Let's go into the paragraph dialog box. You see the tabs are set right here at left. Let's just switch them here. Um, let's uh, drag this one over to the 4 inch mark. And let's drag this one to the 2 inch mark. If we want leaders between those, we could go in and set leaders. Let's double click on this uh, two inch tab to open the tabs dialog box. Tell it to put a leader on that tab and set. Click on the four inch tab. Tell it to put a dot leader and set. And then click OK. And here we have text that was in table format now placed into a um, list of tabbed information. Okay, the next thing we can do is take something that is tabbed information and convert it into, ta into a table uh, or any information actually, uh, whether it be separated by commas or spaces or other special characters, we can convert it into a table. So let's just um, type in some names here. Often you will see uh, names that you want to convert into a table so you can sort more easily. Um, let's do this. Let's uh, Okay, so we have this list of people and, and we want to change them to a table so that we could sort them more easily or we can um, uh, manipulate the information a little more easily. Select the information here. Let's go to the insert tab and click the table drop down arrow. And let's tell it to convert this text to a table. We want two columns. Go ahead and leave it at six rows. And tell it we want it to um, separate the text at the commas. And let's do auto fit to contents. And click OK. And now we have our information in a table. Now if we wanted to select this column and cut it. Go to the Layout tab and tell it to insert a column to the left and paste our information in. Instead of last name then first name, we could sort it uh, where it is first name and then last name. I uh, accidentally inserted a new column, but that's great because I need to teach you how to delete a column. To delete a column, Select the column. If you notice, to select a cell, you get the little black arrow and it allows you to select a cell. To select an entire row, the white arrow pointing in lets you select the row. A little black arrow at the top, though, selects a whole column. To select the whole column, or to delete the whole column, right click, choose Delete Columns, and there you go. If I want to delete a row or a cell, I can right click, choose delete cells. 
I can tell it to, if I want to delete only that cell, I have to tell it if I want to shift the cells left or up. If I want to delete an entire row, I can do so by clicking entire row, or I can delete an entire column. Let's delete an entire row, and it really didn't matter which one you click on. Uh, let's just click um, on this row here. Right click, choose delete cells. You can also do it right here. You can get this um, right here. And we're going to do entire row and click OK. And we have our information um, with our deleted row. To get something back that we've deleted, if we want it back, all we have to do is undo. Let's undo that. Um, and that is converting a table to text or converting text to a table. And like I said, this could be tabbed information. If I wanted to convert all of this to a table, I could do it. Let's just practice that. Let's uh, click and drag to select this information. Go to the Insert tab. Click the Table drop-down arrow. Convert text to table. This time our information is separated at tabs. Um, three columns is what we want. And we can leave it at fixed column width if we want to. Let's click OK. And now we have our information in a table. Set easy, that simple to quickly convert information from uh, one form to the other. Let's undo to get it back to our tab form. Okay, there are a couple more things I need to show you when working with tables. So press Control Home to get back up to your document, the beginning of your document where you can see your two tables. Okay, let's um, insert a row, I'm sorry, a column before this first column in the muscle men table. And let's do go to the layout tab, insert to the left. And let's type in, uh, let's merge these cells. And let's type in uh, Justice League. And this is where we might want to work with our text direction. Let's change our text direction. And that way it looks really nice. And we can adjust this column width now. And um, we have changed our text direction. Another thing we can do with our tables is to auto fit. Before we change the um, column widths uh, manually and force them to be a certain size, if we want to just allow it to naturally auto fit to the width of our text and our columns, we can do that. So to do that, select your table, your entire table there, go to the auto fit button and we can do auto fit contents. And your um, column widths and row heights change, or mainly your column widths change, to match the width of your text. Let's do that to the girl power one as well. Uh, go to auto fit, do auto fit contents. Another button that we can use is if we want all of our uh, columns to be um, the same height or the same width, we can hit the Distribute Columns button and that will make our columns all the same exact width. And you see that that just happened when I hit that. Um, this is the auto fit. The columns will be different widths depending on um, the width of the text in each column. If we do Distribute Columns Evenly command, then we get even columns uh, no matter how uh, big the text is in our uh, columns. We can do the same thing with Distribute Rows and tell it to distribute our rows evenly so that our rows are all the same exact height. Uh, another one that we need uh, to look at um, is the View Gridlines button. If you 
have a table like this one that doesn't have interior borders really and you want to see really where the cells are lying you can choose the view grid lines and you'll see these little dotted lines these grid lines or dotted lines do not print these are not borders they just show you they just indicate to you where the cell boundaries are if you click to turn them off this is the way the table will look when it prints without any external I'm sorry without any internal borders there other than the ones the black ones that you see here to view the grid lines um, you see little dotted lines indicating the cell boundaries you don't need the view grid lines on this one because we've got boundaries so I mean even though it's turned on you don't see the grid lines because we have um, internal boundaries there there's actually one more thing that I'll need to show you about tables let's go down here and let's insert a table real quickly go to insert table and let's just do two columns and a bunch of rows here and uh, let's type in a B C D I'm just hitting the down arrow to go to the next row I've got information here and let's say um, I've got some scores or statistics like 98 25 uh oh I'm hitting enter enter goes to a new line within the same cell then hit the down arrow okay if I want to add a new row and say this is the totals and let's write a line that remember your shortcut to write a line is control R that's good let's write a line numbers numbers are usually write a line control R now in this bottom cell we want to add all of these numbers up and we can quickly do that with a formula in the bottom cell click on the layout tab and click the formula button and the automatic one is to sum if we want to add we can do sum above and um, just click OK there and it added all of our numbers up if we change one of these numbers like this 107 we change it to uh, 71 and click uh, notice that um, when we change this from 107 to 71 um, our total doesn't automatically update to get it to automatically update right click it right here on the field and tell it to update field and it updates your total so let's save this document again control s and um, submit the document as requested by your teacher thank you Thank you.